capitalism. They've they've forgotten, you know, the value of liberty, and you know they want to feel safe. But um, as for these movies, I, I think that in in a case of art, art just reflects what's happening in the world, and you know the the four of us on this radio program are not the only ones smart enough to see the writing on the wall. Um, you know, there are filmmakers all over who can see it coming, and, you know, they they produce films and documentaries to express their concern. You know, Michael, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put something – I just put a link in the chat room, and I'm going to put this link in Skype for you to watch later. And this is just – this is my take um, – on on predictive programming and this this particular uh this predicti- particular video that's uh on YouTube is a pilot episode from the Fox series The Lone Gunman and this show aired on March 4th 2001 and this was before 9/11 so this happened oh roughly 6 months before 9/11 but when when you know when we're done with the show and you've got some spare time. Just watch that that uh, that clip of this episode, and I'm telling you, it'll it makes you wonder just how coincidental some of this stuff is, and um, and just how far uh, the powers that will go to uh, advance their agenda. Because if if one thing one thing that this is one thing that I've noticed, at least in my short time of, of, of following this stuff and being aware is that the powers that be these elitists, uh, these control freaks, if you will, they have to make their, their plans known. They're sick like that. It's like a bad Scooby-Doo episode. And I hate to say it like that, but that's really what it's like. (laughs) They have to do it. It, it, it's, it's I've almost, never watched Scooby Doo either, so you'll have to forgive me. That's okay. That's all right. And you know, it's the the villain always kind of um, reveals his plan because he thinks that he's uh, he's so above invincible. everybody else. Yeah, he's invincible. And I honestly believe it, that there's some sort of sick, twisted something in their head, or whatever. That does this, and 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 they they do this. They put their ideas and their their plans out, and people just don't either. They don't pick up on it, or a, I mean, this aired in two thousand and one, March fourth. It was the first time I saw this was two weeks ago, and I was like, holy moly, bad acting. I can see why this never made it past the pilot, but um, uh, I'm just. Well, it makes book, me wonder, the you book know. Nineteen. 19- the book 1984 yes is presumably an you know expression of what their plans are um so who knows you know but again you know if you're lost in the forest you know that you're cold wet and hungry but you you only know what you don't want you don't know how to get what you do want you don't know how to get home and so we've been wandering lost in the Democratic forest, and then we wander over and get lost in the Republican forest, and that doesn't work, so we wander back to the Democratic forest. And But we're still lost. We're still lost, cold, wet, and hungry. Unless you have a constitutional compass that points you in the direction of liberty, and you follow that in a straight line, regardless of the cost, then you're not going to get liberty. You're not going to get away from, you know, the lesser of two evils. Right. Right. Well, and and Griff, do you think – do you see a uh, emergence on the other side of something uh, that's salvageable? I don't know what's going to happen after we're brought down. I mm-hmm. think there's going to be great violence. I think there will be handfuls of people that will have the ability to rebuild the society. But I also think it's going to take three, four, or five lifetimes to rebuild and to make a, um, make a society that's uh, acceptable. I don't think it's going to come in one lifetime or two lifetimes. I don't know. How well, do you feel, Michael? Texas. I predict that Texas is going to secede from the Union 
that I will run for president of the Republic of Texas and win, and we'll have at least one free state down here in the Lone Star, and the other 49 states can eventually learn by example. <laughs> if at first you don't secede, try, try again. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I've been able to whittle the Constitution down to seven words. Don't hurt me. Don't take my stuff. <laughs> if you can understand that, then you and I can get along in society just fine. doesn't matter about the Constitution. doesn't matter about the Bill of Rights. Forget all that other paperwork. Let's keep it really simple. Don't hurt me. Don't take my stuff. Parentheses, or I'll have to kill you. You know, not to put, put too fine a point on it, but, you know, you got to – the hardest part about liberty – is to allow other people to enjoy it. No, that, you, that's so true. When you, you become know? when you become president of Texas, I want to caution you about the Mexicans with AK forty sevens. They're going to invade you, and that'll be your first problem with with half a million Mexicans coming at you. Okay. Well, we've got twenty one million Texans, most of them carrying guns already, so it, it will be bloody, but. You know, I just point to the Battle of San Jacinto. We won that in 18 minutes. That's that's not bad. That's a good record. <laughs> yeah, Sam it is, Houston. It is Sam record. Houston was not a Texan. He was he was from Virginia. Did you know that? <laughs> most most of the people that signed the Texas Declaration of Independence were not from Texas, and most of the people who died at the Alamo were not from Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, Texas is a state of mind. And it is this devout love of liberty that makes Texans so damn stubborn. And ultimately, you know, we are willing to fight for our freedom. That's one of the reasons the Alamo happened here. Well, Michael, we 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 got about five minutes left, and um, and uh, folks, Michael's website, constitutionpreservation.org. If somebody wants to schedule a sh uh, a lesson or have you teach the Constitution class that you teach, how would they go about doing that? Well, the first thing they do is go to my website and either call me by phone or email me to uh, announce their interest. But ultimately, I cannot travel for three to five students. I've got to have, i got to make it worth my while. Mm -hmm. And so on my website in the, is a calendar tab, and when you point at the calendar tab, it pops down a menu and one of the options that you have is request a city. And so you put your name, phone number, email address, and the city and state where you'd like me to teach the class. And whenever a city gets, you know, 40 or so people, that's when I start to organize uh, a visit. So you tell me where you want the class by, getting, by signing up and getting all your friends and neighbors to sign up as well. And and how much does it cost for uh, the class, like a per person cost? Because I know, I, per person I, cost, if I remember right, you do the silver, correct? The per person cost is either 100 Federal Reserve notes or four ounces of triple nine fine silver. That's a, basically pure silver. That does not mean quarters and dimes. It means <laughs> pure silver. Um, and... I need a minimum of 30 people. So, you know, if you're going to just sign up to get your name on a list, that really doesn't count. Um, I can't buy an airplane ticket and reserve a conference room until I have people signed up. And the preliminary step is it doesn't cost anything to put your name and uh, email address in the database. And, again, that's at constitutionpreservation.org calendar tab request the city folks again you know uh, uh, it's very very important that we understand just where we are and where we are is on the brink we are at the precipice and it's it's really uh, gosh I mean if you haven't started preparing now then you're in a world of hurt wouldn't you say Griff I would say so. We're we're past the uh, 11th hour. 
and John. Uh, John, you have any final thoughts tonight uh, before we uh, before we start signing off? Uh, just uh, prepare as fast as you can because uh, it's coming sooner than what everybody believes. And uh, and uh, all I have to say is when it starts, it's not going to be pretty. No, it sure isn't. Uh, folks, uh, just a reminder, this Sunday evening, this Sunday evening coming up on the broadcast, we have uh, meteorologist John Cash. Uh, John Cash was a meteorologist at Wavy TV 10 in Hampton Roads, Virginia. He was fired because of his uh, stance uh, on some of the, uh, uh, on the direction of the government and where it's going. Uh, he's also uh, he had also started a ministry, and the television station frowned upon that and ended up uh, firing him for him uh, for that. So the first hour of our broadcast on Sunday evening will be John Cash uh, telling his story. Second hour is Pastor Butch Paw. Uh, Pastor Butch is a uh, radio host, uh, and we will be ha- loving. I will love and can't wait for our interview with Pastor Butch, and uh, that'll be great. Next. Thursday evening, we have Henning Kemner coming back to give us a golf update. Uh, He's got a lot of new data, uh, both from NOAA and uh, other government agencies, and he'll be putting that together to give people a better idea of what's going on. But, Michael, I want to thank you for coming out tonight and for uh, giving our listeners um, some very, very good uh, radio. Um, You're always welcome back on this show. Anytime you want to come back, uh, just give me a holler, and I'll, I'll be calling you, of course, <laughs> to, to have you back for sure. Well, okay, as soon as Texas secedes, I start a campaign for president of Texas. So Outstanding. I'll, uh, I'll expect everybody's vote. <laughs> we'll be we'll be uh, giving you some uh, some propaganda, anything we could do for you. But, folks, uh, stay tuned. The Waterman Files are coming on in two minutes, uh, so please stay tuned. And... Uh, Again, I will see you Sunday evening at 8 o'clock Eastern. Take care. Report. A bi monthly report with concurrent intel prudent to every intel soldier. Monitor and track troop movements, black ops, and clandestine operations. Monitor and track the elite's movements. Concurrent intel from whistleblowers, exclusive interviews, special reports, contests, and promotions, and secret documents slash imagery. For more information, go to the intelhub.com and click on bi monthly report. Hub.